Many women who have decided they're going to get a breast lift, commonly with an implant at the same time, have decided, have realized that the scar limited to just around the areola is not going to be accomplishing what they want. Um, because it's true, a full breast lift is going to be much more effective for raising the level of the nipple, consistently giving an areola uh, the appropriate size, and lifting the breast tissue hanging below the fold. But what most women don't realize is that vertical scar, that vertical limb, that up and down scar that's part of the lollipop that uh, many talk about, that does not define the operation. There are actually two operations that use that vertical scar going down beneath the areola. Both of them have some scar in the fold, but there's, wor there's a world of difference in the results between these surgeries. And uh, if you look back in the medical literature, back in the uh, early 2000s, a world-renowned breast surgeon, uh, Scott Spear in Washington, D.C., published a study of breast lift with implants, and he sent questionnaires the first time in history uh, that questionnaires were sent to women who had augmentation mastopexy, which is breast implants with a lift. He was quite shocked. I mean, here he is a world expert. He was quite shocked to find that over half of the women they surveyed, yes, they were happy with this and happy with that. Over half, though, said they needed a revision. I mean, what a shocking, disappointing thing for a plastic surgeon to hear. Uh, women several years out for an operation, they want over half of them want a revision. And what's the most common reason? The most common reason they wanted a revision was more lift. The lift was inadequate. Well, the story gets more interesting because that was the early 2000s when the surgery was done. And now here we are, 2017, 2018, most surgeons are still using the same technique that Scott Spear used in the early 2000s. It's the up and down vertical scar, but it's, a, it's one of the two types that clearly is less effective. It also has a longer scar all the way underneath the fold. A more effective surgery came from Europe in the last 20 to 30 years called the vertical wedge resection. It's still called a vertical lift. You can call it a vertical wedge excision. And the key is the most hanging breast tissue in the middle of the breast, hanging below the fold, that wedge is removed. That's the way this European operation works. And when that most hanging breast tissue is removed, the amount of lift is much more effective. The breast is narrowed, it's projected, and uh, these results far exceed uh, what Scott Spear found. I think there's a trend towards going to it, but still the majority of surgeons in the United States are using an old skin lift, not removing that low hanging breast tissue, trying to hold it up with tightened skin, which already stretched once before and is bound to stretch again, leaving a shape that's just not as good. So after talking about the two different types of full breast lifts that can be done at the same time as breast implants, let me say that here at Hubbard Plastic Surgery, we have fully adopted the European vertical lift with our breast implants. It's going on 15 years that I've been doing it. It's the only type of full lift that I do with implants because the benefits are overwhelming. Uh, I've begun teaching this at a national course and hope to publish it. We're completing our uh, survey now of 105 patients and their satisfaction rate. And it's interesting, we now have completed uh, a repeat of Dr. Scott Spears' survey from the early 2000s. He was using an older technique of a skin lift over an implant and we're using the vertical lift over an implant and showing how much more effective it is. Of course, asking patients their opinion. So uh, uh, we're really, we're, we're true believers in the vertical technique, augmentation mastopexy.